hello uh, so in this video we're going to be setting up our Bitcoin wallet um, so the first thing we need to do to receive uh, funds is to create uh, an address um, so the ad address is um, primarily used to just receive um, payments um, and we can create an address via the Bitcoin CLI get new address uh, method um, so if you want to know a bit more about what that method does um, we can find out by using our help command again so if we type Bitcoin CLI help um, and then the method is get new address um, what this tells us is that um, the get new address method um, has two parameters the first one being or arguments the first one being a label which um, the label name for the address to be linked to so you can call this whatever you want um, and if you leave it as an empty string um, that would be the default name um, and then the other one is the other argument is the address type um, so we have three address types we're going to be creating a, a legacy address um, because um, in order for signing to work prop properly um, we have to create a leg legacy address if we're doing it via the command line but in later versions of Bitcoin um, we do now have a SegWit and Betch32 addresses which one of the features is that they will allow for um, smaller fees when creating transactions and when we call this method what we get returned is is in a sh as a string and um, with our address um, which is a new Bitcoin address and you can see what that looks like as, as a raw um, JSON uh, RPC method HTTP call basically um, cool so what we can do is we can we'll clear our terminal and we can create a new address so we can create a new address with the first argument as blank and the second one is the address type which is legacy so if we press enter um, so this creates a address for us um, and we know that we're on the test net because the address will start with an N or in some cases an M um, so we want to keep this address for safekeeping so we'll copy this over to a notepad somewhere so I'm just going to copy this to mine on my other screen so I'll just copy this over here and that's going to be um, that's what we would need to give to um, the person sending us funds is the this is the address that they would need to send the Bitcoin to um, so we've created a Bitcoin address but we've not really talked about really about what a Bitcoin address is um, so you can think about a Bitcoin address a little bit like a, an email address um, but for funds um, the only difference is Bitcoin addresses are typically designed to be um, single use so ideally you should only use uh, an address once to receive funds um, and every time you want to receive funds going forward you should try and generate a new address um, this is predominantly to do with privacy and so because um, Bitcoin uses um, an immutable um, blockchain um, all transactions are recorded and are public and so um, things like block explorers can um, look at the chain of transactions and through like statistical analysis and stuff potentially um, identify who um, was the person or entity making those transactions and um, if you keep using the same address it will make that process a little bit more easy um, and so what we've what we've created here is a legacy address or what's what's known as a pay p to p k h address um, and that stands for pay to public key address um, 
so a Bitcoin address is actually what's known as a public key or more precisely a 160 bit hash of a public key um, and so for this reason it's called a pay to public key hash um, and this public key is basically what allows you to receive the money or receive, or receive the Bitcoin and each public key has a, an associated private key with it as well and so the private key and the public address or the public key key is what allows you to receive funds and the private key is what allows you to to spend those funds um, and so every time you generate an address what it will do is fill up what's called um, your Bitcoin wallet so when you created your um, Bitcoin address it began to fill up your Bitcoin wallet so I think a nice representation of this is probably nice to show a diagram here so um, so yeah so every cryptocurrency wallet has a public key and a private key um, so your public key is used to receive funds it identifies your account on the network and it can be searched in the ledger and then your private key is only used to sign transactions and prove you own the related public key you should never share it under any circumstances so the concept of the wallet is probably different to uh, to like what a lot of people would um what a lot of people think of now in terms of like somewhere where your money is actually held but no uh, funds are actually held in your wallet itself it's just a, a list of public and private keys which give you authorization to receive funds and uh, spend them essentially um, and so if we head back over to the terminal and we have a look at where in the Bitcoin directory our wallet actually resides um, so if we go to um, so yeah, if we CD into or change directory into our Bitcoin testnet free folder and we list what's in there we have a so in previous versions I think the wallet file was at this level in the directory but now we have a wallets folder so if we CD into our wallets folder if I can type properly um, and we list what's in there we have a wallet.dat file and in this wallet.dat file we um, typically ha is where our public and private keys are held um, and so you shouldn't edit or change this file in any way typically like .dat files are just used supposed to be used for the software in which they reside so they shouldn't really be edited and the contents of the of these files can be plain anything from plain text to binary um, and so shouldn't really be tampered with in, a, in any way um, and the Bitcoin software will use like your private keys and stuff by default so you shouldn't need to access this file in any way but there are ways to do that if you need to and there are also ways to um, do a dump of your wallet into maybe something like a text file for backup um, and you can also view your private keys if you need to and it's something we'll cover in 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 later videos but for now um, just uh, keep that uh, public address that we generated earlier safe and in the next video we will um, try and get some funds sent to that address and start playing around with some um, transactions so i hope this makes sense and i will see you in the next video